coming at you with music and fun. And if you're not careful, you may learn something before it's done. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, hurry, dumb Donald. Yeah, we don't want to miss the brown hornet. It's not a bird. It's not a bee. It's the brown hornet. Hey, what happened? Yeah, what's going on? Believe it. Miss Figure it out. Something's wrong. Oh, that's oh, terrible. I got an idea. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Fat Albert. How you doing? No, my TV set is out, too. We were going to watch The Brown Hornet. Well, so was I. But it says here today that he's supposed to rescue Tweeter from an evil giant radish. Hey, I just thought of something. Why don't you guys come over here? Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. What took you so long? What are we going to do? I was thinking, how about if I tell you guys the story? Wow. Hey, that would be fun, man. Hey, hope it's a good one now. Good one. Hey, hey, hey. A story to save today. What story are you gonna tell us? Well, let me see. I got it. How about a tall tale? A tall tale? What's that? Well, there's stories that are so wild and fantastic and you can hardly believe they're true. Now, take the legend of Paul Bunyan. That guy was something else. Paul Bunyan was one of the biggest heroes of all times, and I mean, he was the biggest. <laughs> Many years ago, when the country was new, there was a young man who would one day become one of America's most colorful folk heroes. Early one morning, about breakfast time, young Paul told his mother, I am powerful hungry. Well, I fixed you up 50 flapjacks and 32 pounds of scrambled eggs. I sure hate to put you to so much work, Ma. Oh, I don't mind now. The only trouble is you keep growing so fast, I don't know how you're gonna fit into the dining room. Don't worry. Here's how. Mmm. <laughs> Good. Well, I better get back to your sock, Paul. Hope I can finish it this week. Ma, I've been thinking. I'm getting too big to stay at home. The time's come for me to be on my way to make a name for myself. I want to be famous by next Tuesday afternoon. I knew this day would come sooner or later. And son, I'm mighty proud of you. Tell me, what are you going to do to make yourself famous? I'm going to become the biggest and best lumberjack that ever lived. And so Paul Bunyan began his journey across America, searching for the right place to open a lumber camp. While he was traveling in Arizona, a nail in the heel of his shoe started to come out. And before he knew it, the nail dug up the ground for some 300 miles. Well, how about that? What a grand canyon. And 
that's how Paul Bunyan dug the Grand Canyon. And later on, the government ran a, a river through it. The Grand Canyon? Oh, you putting us on now. And the way he took the roof off the house, that's impossible. Yeah, but like I told you, it's a tall tale. I mean, lumberjacks used to sit around a campfire, and they would trade stories back and forth, each one trying to top the other one. But let's get back to the story. Not too long after Paul Bunyan left home to look for a place to start his logging camp, it began to snow. And what a snow. It was the worst winter ever. Finally got so cold, the snow turned blue. That's right, I said blue. What was that? Hey, looks like someone fell in. I'm coming! I'll save you! With his massive strength, the mighty Paul threw the ice and snow into the air. He threw it up so far, he reached the North Pole. So you see, that's how the North Pole got so cold. Uh, he's disappeared, but I'll find him. How about that? A baby blue ox. Hey, now, now, babe, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you none. <laughs> hey, babe, God, take no, stop it, babe. I'm, I'm tickling. <laughs> Amazing thing happened while Paul carried the blue ox to safety. Hey, you little critter, you're sure growing fast. <laughs> Looks like you're gonna grow up big like me. Now I won't be so lonely. <laughs> yep, when I build my lumber camp, you'll be right at my side. Right, babe? I like that blue ox. I bet he'd be fun to ride on. And I like how Paul dug the Grand Canyon. Yeah, well, if you think that's something, wait till you hear the rest of the story. And how Paul Bunyan met up with another big fella, Brimstone Bill. Wow, that sounds oh, good, man. Yeah. Brimstone Bill. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear that, man. Yeah. Hungry again, babe? <laughs> well, then have another flapjack. <laughs> Come back, babe. Come back. <laughs> Look, baby, timber. It's the biggest forest I've ever seen. This is where I'll build my lumber camp. Now you and me will be famous by Tuesday. Paul and Babe had lots of work ahead of them to build the lumber camp. Unfortunately, Paul had some unexpected help because that's when he met. Hey, look at Bucky! Just call me Bucky Bunyan. I think I'll take a little stroll over to the Grand Canyon. To me. <laughs> Thanks, Rudy.
Rudy is something else. Well, you want to hear more about Paul Bunyan? Yeah! Hey, all right! Yeah, Paul Bunyan's fun! Yeah. All right. OK. Now, here's how Paul Bunyan met Brimstone Bill. Brimstone Bill? Yeah, I want to hear about it. Come him. on, tell it to him. Babe, I've never seen a forest this big. I sure can't figure out why there's not already some logging camp here. Well, it's because of a twister. Who said that? I did. Over here. Brimstone Bill's my name. Glad to meet you. I'm Paul Bunyan. Uh, this is my mighty blue ox, Babe. Hello, Babe. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying about the twister? See for yourself. It's over there. Feast your eyes on the meanest, nastiest old river that ever was. There's no way any logger can float their logs down that river. They say no one can ever tame that wicked old river. Well, we'll see about that. Come on. You're a wild river twister, but you're no match for us. You'll never tame me. <laughs> Twister, you shouldn't ought to have done that. What you got in mind, Paul? I'll get old babe to straighten out that river, but uh, first I'll need a harness made from the toughest iron. I can handle that. There's a vein of iron ore 60 miles deep. I'll just dig some up. <laughs> Hardy man, Brimstone Bill. And now, to forge Babe's harness. Aha! Tougher harness has never been made. Hold steady, Babe, while I wrap the chain around the river. You won't drive any logs down me. I will, whether you like it or not. Keep at it, Paul. Wrap those chains tight. Hey, babe, pull. Pull like you never pulled before. Pull, babe. Pull away. You can do it, babe. Thanks to your harness. <laughs> wow, that was, man, that was something. Yeah. They sure showed that Twister River, old boss. Mm-hmm. Well, Paul's troubles with the Twister River have just begun. He and Brimstone Bill had lots more adventures before they could open the lumber camp. <laughs> it didn't take long for Paul Bunyan and Brimstone Bill to build the logging camp, and what a camp it was. Everything about it was big. The cookhouse was over five miles long. To serve all that food, Brimstone Bill put in a train to run along the middle of the tables, and Paul fixed it so that the soup would be piped in with fire hoses. Of course, to feed all those men, Paul knew it'd take an awful lot of flapjacks, so he drained the lake and filled it up with flapjack batter. Brimstone Bill brought in a paddle wheeler from New Orleans to stir up the batter. Well, the camp's near finished. Now we can start hiring our men. It was a good idea of yours to build that dam across the Twister River. Well, that dam will power our lumber mill. I plan to keep it busy day and night. Babe's been acting strange lately. Seems something's bothering him about the dam. 
Don't fret, babe. I built that dam out of a mountaintop. It's almost solid rock. There's no way the Twister River will ever get through it. But Babe had good reason to be worried about the dam. Yes, old Twister wasn't so easily tamed. I'll show you, Paul Bunyan, who's the master of the river. <laughs> if that dam breaks, the Twister River will wash out the lumber camp before it even opens. Oh, no! Oh, no! Hey, guys, the TV's working. Want to watch the Brown Hornet? No! Forget it. You want to hear about Paul Bunyan? Looks like the kids are finding out that television isn't the only place where they can enjoy good stories. You know, before there was TV movies and the radio, people used to get together with their family and friends, and they'd share stories that they'd heard about. They'd call these stories folk stories. Well, let me tell you what happened next with Paul Bunyan. There you go, babe. You should be able to plow at 80 or 90 miles an hour. Yep, we're going to need a plenty big farm to feed all our men. First thing I'm going to plant is popcorn. Hey, babe, <laughs> don't you like popcorn? <laughs> it's not the popcorn. He's still fretting over the dam. He's heading for the dam. We better stop him. Come back, babe. It's starting to flow again. I'm just a creek now, but not for long, Paul Bunyan. There's plenty more water where I came from. <laughs> Look, the dam's starting to break. Come on. We have to close the crack. I'll push one side and you push the other. It's not working. I'll show you, Paul Bunyan and Brimstone Bill. I'll wash away your lumber camp and you too. Sam starting to break. <laughs> Scared him off. Scared? Babe's not scared of anything. Idea. He decided to dig a ditch and divert the water to take the pressure off the dam. Yep, that babe was certainly smarter than the average blue ox. There was so much water, babe had to keep digging that ditch across a whole lot of states. And finally, he reached the ocean, where he finally let the water run out. Later on, the government named that ditch the Mississippi River, and it's still there today. <laughs> I'm happy I met up with you. I got a feeling we're gonna have lots of adventures together. You and me, and Babe. <laughs> and that's how Paul Bunyan built his lumber camp and became famous by Tuesday. And then what happened? Well, lots more happened. I just told you a little bit. But probably the best way to learn more about Paul Bunyan is to go to the library. The library? Sure, they have plenty of books about him. And they have lots of tall tales about other people. I bet you'd like to read about uh, Pecos Bill, the greatest cowboy that ever was. Mike Fink, he was something else. And John Henry, the steel-driving railroad man. Man, that was sure a good story. 
and thanks for telling us about the library, because hey, 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 we're on our way. Come on, guys. There's a whole lot of adventures waiting for you at the library. You don't have to wait until your TV's busted. So check it out. Hey, there!